in just a moment, also, I will call up our staff, our pastoral staff, and our, our, our staff, and um, our friends and our board members to come up. But first of all, Pastor Cameron, oh boy. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season, an appointed time, a time for every purpose under heaven. This is the beginning of your season as lead pastor at Covenant Love Church. The Apostle Paul told his spiritual son uh, Timothy to imitate him as he imitated Christ. What does this look like? Here's my charge, according to the Word of God. Cameron Bryce, Michaela Bryce, Fulfill our joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each one of you look out not only for your own interests, but for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, listen to this statement, when so many churches and ministers are seeking reputation, you don't seek reputation, you seek God. And in seeking God, God will give you reputation. Jesus, it says, made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant. Coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Because he humbled himself, because he became obedient to God, then it says, therefore, God has highly exalted him. When you put God first place, you humble yourself. You don't do anything out of selfish ambition. You don't seek reputation. You seek to disciple and love people. God will promote you. You won't have to worry about it. So it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name. And as Pastor Marshall shared with us today, you're digging and redigging the well of the covenant. And covenant is God first, all things for him, endeavoring in every way to give yourself fully to the ministry and what that provides is wells of salvation for you and your family and for generations to come as in Hebrews 11:7, by faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen moved with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. We know you have great faith in what God has called you to do alongside your beautiful wife and the gift of your family. We've already seen it demonstrated through your lives as your lives as a living expression of pouring into investing in the kingdom of God. You have your wife you have your son, children to come. Family is number one under God. Number one. Not God, not God, church, and family. It's in the word of God. God, family, church. You cannot go and save the world if you lose your family. Amen. Must yes. be family, church, okay? I charge you that ministry does not become your mistress. Your love, God, love of your family, love of the church, love of the Word of God, all of that works together. The Bible says this, prayer and constant study of the Word. Study, be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God approved tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing, accurately dividing, rightly handling, skillfully teaching the word of truth. Number four, and the last one, love is the foundation 
for success. Not giftings, not preaching, it is love. The Bible says, if I can speak in tongues of men and even of angels and have not love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for us and in, in us, I am only a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor, providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned in order that I may glory, but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. Love endures long and is impatient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to the suffer wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ready to believe in the best of every person. It hopes, its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Love, because God is love, never fails. Now, as we pray over you right now, God put in my heart two things, only two things to pray for you. He told me to lay hands on you as we lay hands on you and to pray that God would give you wisdom beyond your years and that he would give you a hearing and discerning ear and heart. That's what he asks. So that's what we're going to do. So. In just a minute. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we now, in accordance to your word and obedience to your leading and guiding, we install Pastor Cameron as lead pastor here at Covenant Love Church. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to what you put in my heart, I pray right now and I ask you to fill him full of wisdom beyond his years in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will give him a hearing ear and a discerning heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that anointing that you have placed within Tava and I for the love of unity, Father, and for the salvation of those that are lost. Let that just flood their hearts like never before. Let them hear the cry of the hurting and the broken and the bruised and the wounded. And Father, I just pray that the word that will come will be a word in season every single time for those, Father God, not only for the mature, but those that are growing and those, Father God, that are just coming into the, to, to, to the gospel. And so, Father, we install them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Cameron Bryce, Michaela Bryce. Keep on digging. <laughs> I'd like for our staff, Pastor Scott and Christy, Jacob, Pastor Marshall, Cindy, everybody, Pastor Delphine, come on up.
church. At, uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Marshall and Cindy if they would come. They're in their 41st year of ministry, by the way. And, uh, yeah, first church to support uh, Pastor Cameron and McKaylee when they went on the mission field. So we're so excited about that. And also, one thing I want to do is... Uh, in the picture you saw where Cameron uh, was with the shovel in the bottom of the shovel, uh, you saw a, a young lady there, uh, which is was Bobby Mosier, I'm I not, no, Bobby Nail at that time. But when you saw a lot of the things that were going on there, uh, that was, uh, especially the building in the shopping center, uh, that was Bob Nail, uh, who was over all of that. And, uh, and Sarah was an incredible, she was a part of our first four people, uh, 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 yeah, first staff member, Ernest and Meyer Wood and uh, Bob and Sarah Nail uh, were, were there. And Sarah is with us right now. Sarah, raise your hand. Amen. <clears throat> An amazing family, and their daughter, Bobby, ended up marrying Pastor David. Right there. Yes. And then, <laughs> yes. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to, yes. Yeah. I love the scripture out of Acts uh, where Paul was leaving a leadership meeting. And these were men that he came to deeply love, spent life with. And he said to them as he was preparing to leave them, he says, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, keep you safe, and move you into the inheritance that I have prepared for you. One of the important things about the grace of God is that it really does, it, it helps us move away from trusting in ourselves. It moves us to a place where we're living the unaffordable life, a life we could never deserve. We wake up to his grace, we go to bed with his grace, and it empowers us in every weakness. And it's important to me, when I read that, uh, the words of Paul there, that he could have prayed anything over them, and I'm sure he prayed other things, but that was chief on his mind, because he knew for himself the amazing, amazing worth of God's grace and moving in grace. He knew how to lean on it for every weakness. And you, you're going to need that too. And we're going to surround you with it now in prayer. I don't know why I'm weepy. I'm a <laughs> pee-pee head. So let's pray and release fresh grace into this couple's life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that a, a revelation, of active revelation of your grace. will dominate these young lives. 
dominate these young lives. And that God, when whatever comes, because blessing can be a distraction too, that grace will preserve them, protect their hearts, keep them from trusting in themselves for what only you can do in them and through them. And so we commend them as well to the grace of God today. And we thank you, Father, for an overabundant, superabundant supply of grace in their lives. And we thank you, God, that will cause them to live to your honor and to your praise and to your glory, to live effective in ministry, to live a victorious, powerful, overcoming life because there's a grace for every weakness and a grace for every need. And so we thank you for that today for them in Jesus' name. things within each and every one of us called by your name. Mm -hmm. And we believe that today, which is a promotion day, it is a day that we step from one degree of faith to the next degree of faith. We step today from the one degree of glory to another degree of glory and we all step not just those on this platform every person in this room and every person watching we step from one degree of strength to the next degree of strength for you have need of us to stay in the holy So, God, we welcome and we receive this time of promotion. And I believe that for Cameron and for Michaela, that there are deposits that you put within them that have not yet been activated. But today, today the activation begins. Today there are new things activated within them and there are new graces that come with all that responsibility a new ability to hear to hear clearly distinctly the sound of your voice and the new ability to step out with joy and peace and lead and shepherd God I pray also for this great congregation of people such a great gathering of people unto yourself that somehow each and every one would know that they also have taken a step up, a step forward, and that they lean in. They follow, they follow the voice of the great shepherd and they follow the lead of the shepherd that is here on earth. God, I thank you that even in their lives, I do not know how you are doing this, but I see this, 
that even as we stand here on this platform and these two have been promoted and have been commissioned, that also others, yes, God. others, Candace, you're included in that. Chris, you're included in that. Worship team, you're included in that. Church family, you're included in that. Somehow, some of you are also taking a step up into these places of influence because the world needs the people of God shining bright. And also, Pastor Al and Pastor Dave, Pastor Tava have been promoted, promoted, and now they step into this place to give divine counsel, yes, with experience, but more so with wisdom. The wisdom is coming. They will have a place of wisdom granted to them so that they can counsel and advise and pray with great intention. And for them, God, I ask for great reward. Yes. Great reward. Yes. Yes, in heaven. But now in this time, great reward for their faithfulness from the past to the present to the end of their days and into eternity. God, how we love you for your faithfulness and how we thank you for your doings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Let me say this. Let me say let me say this also. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, last week, I forgot to take the offering. Anybody recognize that? So, uh, but this week, I just want to, here's my, here's my encouragement. I want to encourage you, keep on giving. First of all, every, everything that you do as we're giving to the Lord we continue to move forward, and we're going to continue to move forward. We're going to dream dreams. We're going to dream bigger. We're going to continue to move, and it's all of us together. And as you give your tithes and your offerings, and you're faithful to that, and you never hear me get up and try to trick you or try to do things. It's just basically, if you love Jesus, if you love his work, give. And he will, he will bless you, and he will take care of you. So, uh, and you know how to give. There's often envelopes there. The uh, ushers will be uh, there at the doors, or you can do it on the website, uh, which so many of you do anyway. But again, thank you for your love. Thank you for uh, your, your giving. Thank you for your volunteering. And the best is yet to come. We're, we're going to move forward. And we're going to do the things that we're supposed to do. Amen.